to the kill count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Alive, or Hashtag Alive, or if you're old, Pound Sign Alive. Alive, released in 2020, is the first Korean film featured on the kill count, and I apologize that it took me so long to tap into the rich offerings of South Korea's horror films. Like I said with Wreck, I always feel disadvantaged covering films from other countries. My knowledge base is in American history and cinema, and I never want to feel like I'm shortchanging a movie on this show. I'll do my best here, but I had limited access to behind-the-scenes info, and I also may fall short on cultural insights and or pronunciations. Apologies in advance. Still, I wanted to look at this movie because so damn many of you requested it by sending an email to deadmeatmovies at gmail.com. Which, remember, is the only way your request gets counted. If you leave it in the comments, it's gonna get ignored. That's not me trying to be a dick or anything, there's just no good way for me to quantify all the YouTube comments. I know y'all love to get high on that Netflix nectar, so that's probably why there were so many requests for this thing. Even though I didn't find it anything exceptional. Which is not to say it's bad either. Alive is an enjoyable zombie movie led by a pair of sympathetic characters as it explores feelings of isolation, which are bound to crop up during a zombie pandemic. The main protagonist is Oh Jun Woo, a video game live streamer played by Yu Ah In, who isolates himself in his apartment as soon as the zombie outbreak occurs. As with other classic zombie films, most notably Dawn of the Dead, the restrictive setting works great as we watch our hero work through all the problems you'd have to think about in a zombie zombie situation. How to get food? How to cope with the loneliness? Are you really sloppy drunk if no one's there to see you sloppy drunk? You know, the important stuff. Still, there are a lot of ideas in this movie that don't get explored nearly enough. Chief among them, the whole modern tech and social media aspect. That stuff is largely irrelevant and feels like a last minute marketing tact. You could take it all out and have the exact same movie. I still think it's a cute little film though, despite its melodrama and inconsistencies. So as long as you're not a hardcore zombie purist, you should be able to enjoy yourself. As per usual with zombie movies, the kills I count are going to be coming fast and loose, so just try to hang on while I work out my frame freezing finger. Let's go! The movie begins with a sleepy boy. Oh Jun Woo lives in a pretty nice flat with his parents and sister, who are out getting groceries since there's nothing to eat there. That means no munchies for Jun Woo as he logs on to game and farms some rare drops. Looks like his looting's gonna have to wait though, cause his phone is going off with an emergency alert, and the news is talking about citizens becoming aggressive and violent. And Jun Woo doesn't need to take their word for it. One look outside shows how pandemonious things already are. As Jun Woo watches from his balcony, we see six people being killed. A woman being eaten in her apartment, a man being bitten between some cars, a guy being bitten in the parking lot, and three peeps dying in this overhead shot. I love how these shots establish the apartment complex setting, letting us know where we'll be for the next 90 minutes. By the looks of some behind the scenes footage that didn't have any translations available, production built the complex from the ground up, or at least a facade of one. As things get more explodey, Jun Woo watches a confused used mother reunite with her scared daughter. Aw, oh, that's nice. But then the daughter becomes a zombie and bites her mom, killing her. That's not nice. Jun Woo hears a raucous in the hallway and unwisely cracks his door open, which allows a neighbor named Lee Sang Chal to rush in and ask for refuge. Though Jun Woo just wants the guy to leave, he agrees to let him use the bathroom. While Sang Chal's in there, hopefully not taking a dump, the TV gives us a news dump, reporting all the usual zombie information. Namely, that infected people are cannibalizing victims, and that the affliction spreads through bites and blood. This prompts a more concerned Jun Woo to order his neighbor out with a knife, and his concerns end up validated when the dude begins reacting to a bite on his hand reacting with bloody eyes. His zombie transformation is very jerky, which I can appreciate for being different, even if he sometimes looks like he's auditioning to be in a thriller remake. I like the moment he fully turns, too. <laughs> Jun Woo manages to get the guy out of his unit and watches as he's attacked by another larger zombie. An interesting idea that, sadly, never gets revisited. The opening credits help show more of Jun Woo's apartment complex when it's not too busy looking like that Rubber Johnny music video. <laughs> Remember that thing? She was weird. Jun Woo fortifies his door before getting some texts from his family. They're alive, but they can't come home right now, so they tell Jun Woo to just survive. He'd love to adhere to that order, but it might be difficult 
difficult with his meager food stores. With cell reception spotty, Junwoo takes a picture of himself with his address and posts it on social media. Hashtag I must survive. Hashtag bleach blonde badass. Then he watches how some dude online tries to get reception using a selfie stick and hanging outside his apartment window. It goes great until it doesn't and the guy falls, presumably to his death. Junwoo scopes things out with his phone on a drone and tries to ignore the bleak situation he surveys by playing his video games. But when the internet goes down, it puts an end to that distraction, cause Junwoo hates single player. That night, he watches a cop shoot and kill two zombies as they chase her in the parking lot. But that's all she's able to accomplish before they overwhelm her and bite into her neck. Her gun falls to the ground, and though Junwoo tries to distract the zombies, it's far too late to save her. That lady dead. Somehow, a zombie manages to get past Junwoo's refrigerator, so he has to bullfight it off the balcony, killing the Zed after it runs at him and flies over the banister. The long fall leaves the dead man motionless once more, unlike that dead cop who Junwoo sees has already been reanimated. He resecures his entrance after that latest attack, which also did a number on his already minuscule rations. With the situation deteriorating, he turns to what he knows, recording a vlog for his online audience saying that he must survive, since that's what his family told him to do. <laughs> <laughs> Some habits die hard, huh, guy? As the days go by, Jun Woo begins drinking his dad's alcohol, which is not the best way to stay hydrated. That's the shit you gotta consider now, Jun Woo, with the water no longer running. Yeah, probably shouldn't have spent so much energy putting up faux stained glass on your windows. By day 10, he's almost run out of food and water, and by day 15, he's resorted to drunk sessions of dance crime. But like, who hasn't been there before, am I right? He's such a mess and misses his family so much that he starts having hallucinations of them. I like how much this character unabashedly loves his family, especially his mom. Makes his slim shady ass real lovable. After a grief session that looks like it could be part of a Sia video, Jun Woo gets a voicemail from his family. To get enough reception to listen to it, he carefully tries the old balcony signal booster trick, and although it works, the message he hears is distressing, the sound of his family's last moments. And I'll still put his parents and sister on the count, since we kinda met them in that hallucination. Jun Woo smashes things in his apartment, and then steps outside to smash things in the hallway. Namely, a zombie that he beats to stillness with his golf club. His little exploration doesn't do much other than give me six kills to add to the count. One dead body in the background, two around a corner getting eaten by a zombie neighbor, a woman who's overcome by a horde in the hallway, another body being eaten by a second horde, and a sixth body in the hallway after he evades a bunch of zombies by hiding against a wall. He sneaks his way back inside his apartment and holds off the zombies outside. And before you know it, it's day 20, which is when he sees Seoul being firebombed and rocked with explosions. Wait, what's with all those cars driving on that bridge? Who's commuting during a zombie apocalypse? Anyway, the lights go out for miles around, and that's enough to darken Jun Woo's hopes entirely. He decides to hang himself, and it's pretty friggin' dark when he actually goes through with it, strangling himself with a cord from the ceiling. But then a laser pointer starts shining in his face, letting him know someone else is still alive, and he's encouraged to get down to see what's going on. The laser is being shown from a woman across the parking lot. This is Kim Yu Bin, which Jun Woo learns when they make introductions the next day. Though he's forgotten how to socialize properly, which is not uncommon after quarantining, he is able to signal to her that he's an alright guy. And she's an alright gal! She's practical, measuring her water out for days, compassionate, sharing that valuable water with a houseplant, and crafty, creating a zombie trap at her door. She's also not afraid to kill zombies with hand axes. Though the movie seems afraid when it cuts away from the kill. Come on, movie, you chicken! Bok, bok, bok! Though rain can replenish their water supplies, food is harder to come by. So with Jun Woo's stomach cramping from hunger, the two of them set up a neat little zip line between their flats using Jun Woo's drone. I absolutely love this part. It's such a fun idea and a good use of the drone technology. The first half of the movie is fine, but pretty predictable. It's the stuff with you, Ben, that made me enjoy Alive a lot more. Before they used the drone to make a zipline, less fruitful attempts were made, and unfortunately, one of those ropes is found by a zombie firefighter. Since an earlier news report mentioned zombies instinctually performing behaviors, it's not surprising when the 
this dude decides to climb the rope, which also inadvertently knocks Yu Bin out with a table. Jun Wu virtually distracts the climbing zombie with his drone, and though his efforts ultimately fail, they do stall the climb long enough for Yu Bin to get back up and cut off the firefighter's hand. Ha! <laughs> Using a hand axe too? That's pretty fun. Maybe not for the zombie firefighter though. He, he did. Oh, nasty gory head there. With food a forever problem, Jun Wu arms himself up to go out and forage. He returns to bodies I've already counted and gets a set of keys from his neighbor's corpse, earning entry into the adjacent unit where he does discover a new corpse with a veiny foot sticking out from under the cover. He takes a bunch of food from the fridge and finds a jar of Nutella, a jacket, and some walkie-talkies before getting attacked by a zombie that used to be his neighbor's brother. Capping off a solid little sequence, Jun Wu uses the power of pull-up bars to get away. He has a king's meal of Nutella and beer, then sticks the treats along with a walkie inside a delivery lunchbox to Yu Bin. That means they're finally able to talk! Yeah, 안녕하세요. Sorry, sorry. sorry, that means they're finally able to talk. She thanks him for the food, and he thanks her for saving his life, though she says he saved himself. And looks like she might know a thing or two about that. They make noodles together via walkie, since that's the kind of shit you do to socialize when you're under lockdown, and playfully banter about their preferred methods of meal prep. They have to quiet down and take cover when a zombie stampede runs through the complex, and though Yu Bin accidentally alerts them to her presence, Jun Wu saves her by calling another flat in her hallway and leading the undead there instead. Still, it's time they make some big moves. And I don't mean drowning that snake plant, you Bin. They don't need that much water. She kicks off their plan by running and jumping out her window. In a stunt that I can't say for certain without translation. But it looks like actor Park Shin Hai actually did herself. Man, that looks like fun. She gets down to the parking lot and runs through the zombies like she's on a game show, making a hell of an impression on Jun Wu. <laughs> During this very fun action sequence, I count eight kills, all from Yu Bin's hand axe. She slashes the first in the face, the second in the chest, and after losing a little bit of speed, gets two more. Get out of here, zombies! After grabbing the police officer's gun and being joined by Jun Wu, she kills another one, two, three, four. Again, giving us eight total. I'm not counting any of these golf club beatings as kills, by the way. I don't think they're lethal enough here. They get into the somehow still powerful powered elevator in Jun Wu's building and head up to the 8th floor, which earlier Yu Bin had seen was unoccupied. Oh and hey, this is the first time these two are together in person. Hope neither of them smell too bad. They are in an elevator. On the 8th floor, they start trying all the doors, but a goddamn mindless zombie horde shows up, ruining a good plan like they always gotta do. As Jun Wu fends the Zeds off, Yu Bin opens a door to find an occupant, a stranger who pulls her inside and uses some smoke grenades to rescue you Jun Wu as well. Inside the stranger's apartment, there is some initial distrust with a side of astonishment. <laughs> He pours them water, which they regard with suspicion until he drinks some himself, and after quenching their thirst, they agree to eat his canned food as well. The stranger mentions that according to the news, there are rescue teams on the way, and that gives Jun Wu and Yu Bin so much joy, they begin to weep. Only one problem, this place might not actually belong to this stranger. Oh, and Jun Wu just passed out. Hmm, that's two problems then. Yeah, somehow this guy was able to drug them, despite their precautions, and after zip-tying Jun Wu's wrist, the stranger drags a weakened Yu Bin into another room. I'm not a big fan of this dude's betrayal. It's something that happens way too often in zombie media. He binds Yu Bin and locks the door, trapping her in a room with a zombie. This undead little lady used to be the stranger's wife, and he wants to feed her fresh humans to keep her, um, unalive. I guess. But a reawakened Jun Wu is not a fan of this place's food chain and demands the stranger let Yu Bin free, threatening him with the police gun they grabbed. Instead, the stranger lets go of his wife's leash, leaving Jun Wu to try to restrain the zombie wife from eating Yu Bin's face off. He eventually loses control, and after some screaming, Yu Bin falls quiet. But when the stranger opens the door, turns out the ladies were just silent wrestling, and the two of them spill out into the hallway. The wife ends the life of the stranger by biting him in the neck, and Yu Bin puts them both down with a couple of off-screen gunshots that turn a lot of Zed's heads. With the undead unwashed masses headed their way, Yu Bin asks Jun Wu to mercy kill her. 
ちっちゃな。Quite a tall task, and though Junwoo doesn't want to, he resigns himself to the plan until they hear the buzzing of a bunch of helicopters outside. The rescue choppers are real, and they're flying overhead right now. The two of them head out with some smoke grenades, and while I once again won't count golf club beatdowns as kills, I will count this zombie Junwoo tosses over the edge of the building. That's consistent with earlier kills I've counted. And don't worry, Junwoo's not alone in this fight. I'm Kim Yu Bin, and this is Zombie Shopping. They run to a stairwell and begin making their way to the roof. And though Yu Bin is attacked and has to stick her hand axe into a zombie's head, these staircases thankfully came straight from the Scream series and have plenty of bikes they can use to fend off the living dead. The two of them get out to the roof, but there are no more choppers in sight. Refusing to give up hope, Jun Woo starts screaming for salvation at the top of his lungs. <laughs> Yu Bin tearfully joins him as the zombies burst through the roof door, and with her gun only loaded enough for Jun Woo to shoot down two zombies running towards them, it looks like it's the end for our heroes here. That is, until a somehow unheard helicopter rises up out of nowhere to give them an unlikely rescue, thanks to soldiers shooting off rifles. Oh no, I don't want to count all these dead Zeds. Here, I'll wait until Jun Woo and Yu Bin are safely aboard the bird, then use this overhead shot to add 12 kills to the count. I got that number by counting 13 still bodies on the roof as they fly away, subtracting the two I already counted that Jun Wu shot down, then adding one more kill for this zombie that went over the edge when they were getting into the chopper. <laughs> the movie ends with Jun Wu and Yu Bin alive and together. It's a sweet, happy ending, especially when we hear that rescue teams are currently using social media posts to locate and save survivors. Kind of rare for a zombie film to end on a somewhat hopeful note. I like it! How many hashtag dead people did I count in hashtag alive? Let's find out and get to the numbers. But first, I've been eyeing this guy all damn day. Mmm. Oh! Oh, it's so good! It just tastes so damn good! By my count, there were 53 kills in alive. Always murky when it comes to zombies, though. I counted 15 female kills, 20 male kills, and 18 unknown victims, giving us a decently even pie chart all around. With a runtime of 99 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 1.87 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to the firefighter zombie, and cut off with a hand axe. Still a gosh darn knee slapper to me. Doll machete for lamest kill will go to those zombies gunned down at the end. The spray and pray is for noobs. And that's it. Alive came out earlier this year and was based on an American script for a movie called Alone, which just came out last week. Don't be confused if you end up watching both. Matt Naylor wrote the Alone script and then co-adapted it to make Alive. On Sunday, we'll get some good grief with Hereditary. But until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this Kill Count. I want to thank some patrons like Blake McCaw, Jolly Spook, Andrew Fade, Adam McDonald, Tori Tindall, and Tempescu67. Didn't expect to do so many zombie movies this year, but that's what ended up happening. I'm hoping to get to the Romero movies sometime early next year. Don't forget about that email address for Kill Count requests. Be good people.